NASA has revealed that they have detected a radio signal coming from a massive exoplanet. The discovery has caused a stir among scientists as they scramble to understand the origin of the signal and what it means. Today, let's talk about NASA's warning that a huge exoplanet has started sending Earth signals. Are these signals natural, or could they be a product of an advanced alien race? Most of these signals come in the form of something called fast radio bursts, or FRBs. FRBs are super intense, millisecond long bursts of radio waves produced by unidentified sources in the distant cosmos. Their discovery in 2007 by American astronomer Duncan Lorimer led to the term Lorimer bursts. Since then, just a few dozen similar events have been observed in data collected by radio telescopes around the world, building evidence that points to a variety of potential causes. With much still to learn about FRBs, their mechanism is one of the biggest mysteries in modern astronomy. Because of their mysterious nature, many astronomers have dedicated themselves to further studying this phenomenon. Scientists may have detected radio emissions from a planet orbiting a star beyond our Sun for the first time. The astronomers behind the new research used a radio telescope in the Netherlands to study three different stars known to host exoplanets. The researchers compared what they saw to observations of Jupiter, diluted as if being seen from a star system dozens of light years away. And one star system stood out, Tau Boates, which contains at least one exoplanet. If the detection holds up, it could open the door to a better understanding of the magnetic fields of exoplanets and therefore the exoplanets themselves. Researchers at Cornell University are still not sure that the signal they detected really is coming from the planet, dubbed Tau Boates B. The researchers called for additional observations of the system, which is about 51 light years away from Earth in the constellation Bootes. The new research actually began at Jupiter. The researchers had previously studied that planet's radio emissions and then tweaked those measurements to reflect the effect the expected closeness to the host star and distance from Earth would have had on their observations of an exoplanet. Then, the scientists consulted observations made in 2016 and 2017 by the Low Frequency Array, or LOFAR, in the Netherlands. In addition to the potential signal from Tal Boates B, the researchers also report that they may have picked up a signal from the star Epsilon Andromedae, or its planet, but that detection was even fainter than the one from Tal Boates B. The researchers are interested in detecting radio emissions from planets because such information may help scientists decipher what's happening in the same world's magnetic fields. Those magnetic fields, in turn, influence conditions on the surface of the planet. Earth's magnetic field protects the atmosphere that makes the world one we can survive, for example. Such magnetic fields can also tell scientists about other qualities of the world, like its structure and history. But so far, studying those magnetic fields directly has been difficult for scientists to manage, despite the fact that nearly every planet in our solar system has had one at some point in its history. Hence the interest in using radio emissions as an intermediate. Researchers learn from our own Jupiter what this kind of detection looks like, but that's just the beginning of the story, since the radio emissions could still be coming from the stars or another source instead of the planet. There remains some uncertainty that the detected radio signal is from the planet. The need for follow-up observations is critical. Over the years, scientists have found many different mysterious signals directed toward Earth. In one instance, astronomers searching for signs of life beyond Earth spotted something strange. An as yet unexplained radio signal appears to be coming from the direction of Proxima Centauri. Adding to the excitement, at least two planets orbit this star, one of which might be temperate and rocky, like Earth. Breakthrough Listen, a decade-long search for alien broadcasts from the nearest million stars, was using Australia's Parkes Observatory to study Proxima Centauri when the team detected the conspicuous signal, which they dubbed BLC-1. The radio waves were picked up in observations made between April and May 2019. Though many scientists strongly suspect that the signal is human in origin, BLC-1 is the most tantalizing detection Breakthrough has made so far in its search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI. 
The team is preparing two papers describing the signal and follow-up analysis, which isn't yet complete. While researchers continue to analyze the signal, and experts caution that there is almost certainly an ordinary terrestrial explanation, even a remote hint of life beyond Earth has people excited. Scientists have been scanning the skies for radio signals that could be artificial in origin for 60 years, starting with Project Ozma, a search conducted in 1960. Unlike radio waves that Cosmos produces naturally, these whispers from extraterrestrials are expected to look a lot like the transmissions humans use to communicate. Such signals would cover a very narrow range of radio frequencies. They would also have a characteristic drift, indicating that the source is moving toward or away from Earth, a clue that the radio source is coming from a distant cosmic object, such as a planet orbiting a star. Scientists believe that only human technology seems to produce signals like that, such as things like Wi-Fi, cell towers, GPS, and satellite radio. All of these produce signals exactly like the ones they are searching the cosmos for, which makes it very hard to tell if something is from outer space or human-generated technology. Over the decades, astronomers have detected numerous candidate signals. Some turned out to come from previously unknown astronomical sources such as pulsars, the rapidly rotating corpses of dead stars that beam radio waves into the cosmos. The first known fast radio burst, brief blasts of radio waves that are still somewhat mysterious, initially seemed as though they could be artificial signals. Signals called paratons, which are less energetic bursts of radio emission, also raised eyebrows until scientists determined their origin. A microwave oven. BLC-1 could be beaming from an object that isn't transmitting as expected. A satellite that hasn't been identified yet, a plane traveling overhead, a transmitter on the ground near the telescope's line of sight, or perhaps something even more mundane, like faulty electronics in a nearby building or a passing car. And then there are the signals that astronomers haven't been able to definitively pin to a natural source, such as the famous WOW signal, picked up by the Ohio State University Radio Observatory, colloquially known as Big Ear in 1977. This extremely bright barrage of radio waves initially looked like a real SETI detection, but no one's been able to verify it or find it again. In 2015, Breakthrough Listen kicked off a decade-long search funded by Silicon Valley investor Yuri Milner, and so far, the team hasn't found anything definitive in their scans of the skies. Starting in April 2019, Breakthrough aimed the Parkes telescope at Proxima Centauri, not necessarily because scientists were searching for aliens, but because they were hoping to better understand the gargantuan flares that small red dwarf stars like Proxima frequently emit. While processing those observations this summer, Shane Smith, an undergraduate from Hillsdale College in Michigan working with Breakthrough, spotted BLC-1 radiating from the star. Although the signal is faint, BLC-1 passed all the tests the Breakthrough team uses to filter out the millions of signals generated by humans. It was narrow in bandwidth, appeared to drift in frequency, and disappeared when the telescope shifted its gaze from Proxima to a different object. Over the following days, four similar signals appeared, although some have been ruled out as radio interference. According to astronomers, if BLC-1 is, against all odds, a postcard from the star system next door, then statistically speaking, the Milky Way must be stuffed with communicating civilizations. In this case, there would be more than a half billion societies out there in our galaxy. Since the detection, the team has again observed Proxima Centauri and found nothing. Scientists are working on developing new tests that could pinpoint the signal's origin, including continuing to aim the Parkes telescope at Proxima. Scientists from the SETI Institute are already in the process of creating new tests and diligently working to confirm the signal's origin as a natural part of the SETI endeavor and one that everyone can learn and benefit from. The team has stated that evaluating BLC-1 has taught them a lot about testing their data. Follow-up observations of Proxima Centauri will be valuable for understanding how such stars behave, as well as for achieving a comprehensive SETI search of a nearby star system with known planets, even if it isn't populated by technologically savvy aliens. Researchers say that even if this signal is most likely interference from human technology, the process of identifying it has made them better at searching for such signals in the future. The researchers scanned Proxima Centauri across a frequency range of 700 megahertz to 4 gigahertz, with a resolution of 3.81 hertz. This is the equivalent of tuning to more than 800 million radio channels at a time with exquisite sensitivity. Using the Parkes Telescope in Australia, one of the largest telescopes in the Southern Hemisphere, since 2016, scientists have detected more than 4.1 million hits, or frequency ranges, that had signs of potentially significant radio signals. 
However, upon subsequent analysis, the vast majority of such hits usually turned out to be emissions from human technology here on Earth. Specifically, the researchers looked for radio signals that may have come from Proxima Centauri based on two main criteria. First, they looked at whether the signal was changing steadily in frequency over time. A transmitter on a distant planet is expected to move concerning whatever telescope on Earth detects it, leading to a Doppler shift in frequency, akin to how ambulance sirens sound higher pitched as the vehicle drives towards you and lower pitched as it moves away. Rejecting hits with no such hints of motion reduced the number of hits from about 4.1 million to about 1 million. Second, the researchers determined whether the remaining hits appeared to come from the direction of Proxima Centauri. To determine this, the telescope pointed in the direction of the star and then pointed away, repeating this on-off pattern several times. A candidate techno signature would appear only in the on observation, when the telescope is looking toward the star, whereas local sources are expected to have both on and off observations. After scientists applied both these filters, they next visually inspected the remaining 5,160 candidates to weed out common mistakes. For example, sometimes a faint signal was visible in the off observations but was not quite strong enough for the automated data analysis software to detect. The remaining signal of interest persisted for more than two hours of observations and appeared to be present only in on observations from Proxima Centauri. The scientists think BLC-1 is most likely an extreme example of local interference in the sense that its properties are very different from other interference and thus it could mimic a bona fide techno signature. The project will continue monitoring Proxima Centauri and keep refining its algorithms to improve its ability to discriminate between real and false signals. The field of techno signature science has matured to the point where sufficient technical expertise exists to investigate putative signals in great detail, and the data are of a high enough quality to do so rigorously. The successful detection and investigation of BLC-1 are indicative of a dramatic expansion of observational capability and SETI searches. In the future, upcoming radio telescopes such as Meerkat in South Africa and the Very Large Array, or VLA, in the southwest United States will offer new and powerful ways to reject interference and improve our sensitivity. Astronomers say they are already well along in deploying new study systems on Meerkat and VLA, and when they are fully online, they will allow them to observe millions of stars per year between them. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about an unexplained structure found near the ISS. Do you think an alien race is advanced enough to send us messages? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.